Hey guys, Melanie here at Vision City. I'm the creator of the Printable Art Selling Machine course. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you all about digitizing your original artwork so you can upload it for sale online. Um, this video is going to be outlining how to really start that process of digitizing your artwork. The first way that I would recommend to go about this is to photograph your art. Now this is something that can be done with a professional digital SLR camera or it can actually even be done with your smartphone. Uh, believe it or not, our smartphones have come a long way from those of the past and nowadays the high quality of the smartphones actually, it actually can work for online purposes to showcase your digital downloads um, and to even use them as a uh, high, high enough quality. So the first thing you're going to do when you're photographing your art, now this is whether you are using a digital SLR or your smartphone, is you're going to think about the lighting. Now the lighting is really going to determine the quality and this is where the most important things come into play when it comes to digitizing your art. If the lighting is off, the quality will be completely off. Um, the actual photograph will look more pixelated, the colors will not look right, um, everything about the artwork will not look accurate and obviously that's not our goal. Our goal here is to capture your artwork in its true form. So you're going to literally be using your camera, uh, whether it's a digital camera or your um, smartphone, um, in, in order to actually capture the right lighting so that we can really portray your art in its natural form. So the lighting that we're going to use is going to be natural lighting. Now, what is natural lighting? Light, natural lighting is the lighting that comes in through windows. So it's the way that the sunlight naturally brings light to a room, for example. Now, we're not going to ever use harsh direct light. So you're not ever going to put your artwork outside, for example, and photograph it outside without a covering because then the sunlight will be too harsh and it'll actually create shadows. So what you want is even natural light. And on screen now, I'm showing you some examples of what I mean by even natural light. So in this case, it would be a good opportunity to say set your art up on maybe a shelf or on some sort of a um, like leaning somewhere on a desk or somewhere that you can then photograph it and photographing it on a straight angle which I will get to in a minute but in this case I want to really talk about the lighting the lighting needs to be covered so you're always going to have um, something above you so maybe you could even do this in a garage um, you can do this in some sort of a outdoor covered space so that you're getting the natural light in from the sides, maybe the windows or an open garage door, um, but you're not having any light from above, okay? You also want to make sure that there's no flash being used um, and that there's no glass. So for example, you're never going to photograph your artwork behind glass. So if you had it in any kind of a frame or behind any glass, you're going to remove that, of course. And you're going to also not photograph using any flash from a camera. You're also not going to use any lighting above you. So say, for example, you're in a room that has the natural are those uh, regular kind of tungsten lights, those kind of 60 watt lights that we have in most of our homes. You're going to actually turn off all other lighting so that only the lighting that is coming in from the windows is going to be used. Now this is really important because if you keep the tungsten lighting or the you know 60 watt lights or that you know the ones that are in our lamps or in, in our um, in our chandelier lights in our homes or pendant lights, what's going to happen is they actually emit a very warm kind of uh, color to our art and they actually change the it's called color temperature. I know it sounds like a funny term, but it they actually change the color temperature so that our art starts to look warmer than it is. So we don't want that. We were trying to photograph the art in its most kind of balanced color temperature, which is natural lighting. Now you may need to do a slight color adjustment, which I will talk to you about in um, some of the next videos, because even with natural lighting, sometimes depending on the time of day or the weather, uh, maybe if it's cloudy day or a really sunny day, sometimes the color temperature, in other words, really the white areas um, is a good way of gauging color temperature. Say the white areas of the paper or the white areas of your artwork, you want the white areas to look white, okay? So you want really what's called white balance. 
And sometimes you need to kind of fix that later on with color correction on your computer. So using a color correction software like Photoshop, for example, is what I use. This is a great way to adjust the color temperatures. You can even do some subtle changes on your phone even. So say if you've taken these photographs uh, with great lighting and you actually have them on your smartphone, you can actually do really subtle changes on your phone using your smartphone's just uh, color correction tools. So for example, exposure, um, warmth, uh, things like that, things that are going to actually really help with color temperature and just making sure that everything is looking really as, as close to your, your natural artwork as possible. When it comes to the angle that you're going to photograph your original artwork on, you're going to actually place the camera, whether it's your smartphone or a DL DSLR, you're going to actually place the camera fairly centered within your art, and then you're going to step back by a few feet, obviously, just to make sure you're capturing the entire piece. You're also going to make sure that your art is on a 90 degree angle to you. So in other words, it's facing straight up and down. Now, some people like to uh, photograph downwards at their art. If you prefer to try this method, I say by all means, go for it. Some people prefer this because then their art is not leaning on anything and they want to photograph downward on a table. If that is something you're more comfortable with, then I don't see any reason why you shouldn't try it. Uh, but these are kind of two different ways you can do this, um, this approach. If you are going to be photographing your artwork uh, facing uh, downwards towards a table, for example, you're going to need to stand on a chair uh, or even on the table if you need to, if, it's lar if your artwork is that large. And you're going to then try and again get yourself or your, your uh, camera into the center location of the artwork. The reason why I say that is because when you're um, leaning towards one side of the artwork, maybe the top or the bottom, what's going to happen is it's going to slightly skew things. It's going to make things look a little bit almost angled and uh, wide angled. And you don't want that. If you are photographing with a digital SLR, I encourage you to use a 50 millimeter lens. 50 millimeter lenses are great because they pretty much see things the same way that our eyes see them. And so it's not going to create a wide angle and it's not going to create a zoom. It's basically going to just photograph the art exactly as it is without creating any angles. Hey, I hope that video really helped you learn how to digitize your original artwork so that you can upload it for sale online. If you want to know more about selling printable art online, I encourage you to click the link below and you can find out more about the printable art selling machine course. This has been helping thousands of other artists all around the world to get their own artwork up online for sale. I also encourage you to uh, like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and also to leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video and maybe other questions you might have for me.